Welcome everyone to the Adversity to Advantage podcast. I'm very excited. It's an early Saturday morning, so we're still waking up. But I've got Anne-Marie Smith, who is a life strategist, which is a great title. I love that so much. And she's helped hundreds of people overcome anxiety specifically. So we're, I'm so excited to have you here to just delve into this topic, find out a little bit about your story. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for having me on the show. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you all. Thanks for I'm coming. excited about speaking to you this morning. Lovely. So give us, give the listeners a little bit of a sense of what you do. So, so you work with an anxiety. Like, what are you passionate about uh, at work at the moment? So I'm really passionate about helping um, my clients and just helping people in general kick fear out of their life, fear and anxiety. I feel like it holds... It does hold a lot of people back in their lives. Just the fear of stepping out or, or you know, taking a risk or sometimes uh, fear linked to like lies that have been spoken over them or mindsets that they have about themselves. That they're not good enough, that they can't do this, that they can't, you know, they're not qualified in that. Those type of mindsets, I feel like they hold us back. Um, a lot in our lives and I'm just passionate about helping people conquer those and like getting the life of their dreams what's it like when somebody kind of gets it when they kind of go uh, oh yeah it's just fear it's just like a mirage of something that's holding me back and they switch their mindset and and kind of get it what's that like you know what it's so awesome it's such an amazing amazing feeling I had a client during the week and she's just come on leaps and bounds in regards to this you know she she used to have these mindsets that were almost put over her. She didn't put them on herself, I suppose, just in regards to how she was raised or, or the job she'd previously. And she would initially go, oh, you know, I can't do that. That's just not me. I just don't have it in me. And now she'll recognize that that's a mindset, that that's a limiting belief. And she'll go, so I thought that. And then I thought, no. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to make a decision in the moment. I'm going to do it. And to see, and I'm just like, it's just so wonderful to see people take authority over their own lives and take control and know how to do that. That's amazing. It's amazing. It's almost like you can learn how to self coach yourself when you, when you get it and when you know what sentences you want to use to maybe override your conditioning or, or (laughs) yeah, what you've been trained to believe. Completely. I feel like, you know, as a life, as a life strategist, you want to be, you want to support, you know, your clients, but you don't want to support them. You don't want them to have to get you to support them for life, I suppose. You want them at some stage to, to really get to where you want them to be and be able to kind of fly on their own, just know who they are, have a real sense of self-worth and and go for it, just go for the life of their dreams and achieve it. And to be able to recognize when these fears or, or lies that they've been believing pop up and take control over them there and then and move forward in their lives. I love that. It's the sign of a successful kind of work with a strategist or a coach or a therapist even is that you they don't have to be attached to you forever right yeah so, so I yeah know, completely yeah so I know that you would have learned some of this stuff for yourself so you might have had limiting beliefs or fears around your own life because often the journey is deeply personal for us and once we've cracked it ourselves we get really excited about like spreading that to other people so give us a little bit of context just about what like what was it like for you growing up what were the the conditions do you, do you feel like you got prepared for for life in the adult world um definitely I feel like um well to begin at uh 16 I was kind of like your your average you know teenage girl really happy go lucky um always going out with my friends um things dramatically changed at 18 when my brother was killed in a car accident um that sent my life into kind of a bit of a whirlwind um and I I kind of went into a life of of drinking and, and drugs t- type of thing. I was in a long-term relationship. It broke down as well. Um, and it sent me into a whirlwind of depression and anxiety for a couple of years. Um, and I suppose I was in that place. I didn't know how to get out of it. Um, at the time, I was doing a master's. So I jumped out of the master's, jumped on the next flight to New York, Um and around that time in dealing with, even though I was in this fantastic place like New York and dealing with this depression and, and anxiety and panic attacks, panic attacks started to kick in and I like just um, wouldn't be able to breathe in them. Like I wouldn't be able to breathe through. The, it was this huge fear over me, um, a fear maybe of 
you know, the loss that I'd gone through, all these type of things. And, and people listening may not have gone through um, such a huge loss in their life. They may not have a, had a huge relationship breakdown or grief, but they might have gone through similar situations um, throughout their life that it would cause them similar feelings, I suppose, like this anxiety, this depression and panic attacks. But for me personally, I went... Um, I found faith and that really helped me pull myself out of it. But I also just made a decision. I decided one day that after a huge panic attack where I had a panic attack at one o'clock in the morning, I couldn't breathe. I made the decision that that was not going to happen again. I was not going to let it happen again. And I was going to take authority over this anxiety. I was going to take authority over this depression. And I had tried everything. I had tried, you know, um, going to church. I had tried exercise. I tried working out. I tried everything at this stage and nothing had worked. But I really think it was a combination for me personally. Finding a real relationship with God was a huge kick in it. But also just myself personally deciding to take authority over it and go, I'm just not dealing with this anymore. Um. So I started to, let me say it in the simplest terms, that every time these these lies entered my head or this mindset started to take control of, of my mind, I felt, I would um, rebuke it as such. I would go, no, that's, that's not actually the truth. That's not what I'm going to do. I am going to tell myself the truth. I'm going to say, no, that's a lie. I can do this. Or that's a lie. I can be happy again. Um, in the simplest terms, they're just simple strategies. The main point is is that I decided, I made the decision to take authority over these thoughts or over these lies. And I really think that's the main strategy for people dealing with fear or dealing with anxiety or dealing with these lies or, or limiting beliefs or mindsets is to recognize this. It's the awareness. First so how, of, first like how long did this have to maybe go on for, for you? Like I, I sometimes refer to like rock bottoms or crash points. Like it gets so bad that we suddenly realize that we have a choice between, you know, staying in that spiral forever or, or that people can feel suicidal or, you know, like it just can't go on anymore. And then they somehow find it within themselves or have an outside influence that supports mm. them. Like, did you have outside influences that helped that change? Did it just get so bad that you were just like, fuck this, I've got to change my strategy? Like what, what was the catalyst for you? Um, well, I suppose period wise, I, I definitely was in that period for about two years. Um, right. And it was, and I was definitely suicidal at points throughout that period as well. Yeah. Um, so that was my rock bottom. It really was. I, I really pinpoint the rock bottom to that morning at 1am where I had an anxiety attack and I couldn't breathe. I literally thought I was going to die. I was going to die there and then. And I, I called my sister in in the panic, during the panic attack, but I couldn't physically talk to her because I couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. And that was my rock bottom. That was the moment that I went. That was the catalyst where I went. I'm not doing this anymore. This is too painful. I can't continue to allow this to happen to myself. Um, like I said, I feel like the, the, the influence of my faith at the time of, of having a, establishing a relationship with God and exploring that, if I felt personally like it gave me more strength inwardly, inwardly. Um, and I know that's something different for everybody, but for me, from the inward, um, inward perspective out, it felt like it gave me more strength to take authority over it and did yeah. you um like did people know that this was going on for you did you share this with any anyone because I, I know for me I isolated I felt so much shame when I was in that position you know of, of depression and feeling suicidal um that I you know told no one or it just came out in very you know random ways like maybe if I was drinking or you know rather than actually being open to you know, talking, sharing, support. What was that bit like for you? Um, I think initially it was probably, I was probably quite similar to you, Petra. I would have kept it in. I was, it was a bit shameful to be feeling this way. I wouldn't have spoken to people about it. And I think as time passed, when I really hit rock bottom, um, I started to become more open about it and talk about it. And I did, you know, try and like you were saying, trying to let it out when I was drinking. I definitely tried drinking the depression out of me at one stage, the most unhealthy thing you could do, obviously. Um, but when you're in that mindset, it just seems to make sense. Um, and I think I had an epiphany around the same time that actually 
the drink was never going to help. Drink or her drugs never help. They just prolong the feeling. Like they get rid of it for a couple of hours, and then the next day you have to deal with it again, right? Well, it's worse, um, right? Yeah. But I do remember person. having a, a very deep conversation with one of my sisters at the time and saying, "This is exactly how I'm feeling," and she was really trying to hug me at the time, saying, "You know, have you tried exercise? Have you tried?" you know meditation anything like any of those things and I was going yes I've tried that yes I've tried that nothing is working um so I think initially I was very quiet about how I felt as you said it was it felt quite shameful to be feeling that way it almost made you feel weak or inferior and um, but when you really hit that rock bottom I mean there's no further to go so you just kind of have to let it out right yeah, so so you get that moment of, you know, taking authority and going, I can't do this anymore. And then slowly you start, you still have the mindset stuff of this is shit or like all the negativity, but you begin to override it and just go, I don't believe that I'm going to put in some new messaging. What was this period of, should I say, recovery like? Like, um, there's always this middle ground where we love this. We love the story of like, oh, rock bottom, and now I'm a life strategist and life's great. Oh, yeah. right? But I will, I'm interested in that middle bit. Like, what what are the things that you learned? What did you have to do for yourself? Did you end up going to therapy? Was it just that look, kind of the church? Like, what helped? What did you do? Um, yeah, I did actually end up going to therapy. I went to I went to some counselling, which really helped. Um, thinking back about it, I think. Um, the grief of my brother had obviously a tremendous impact on me. And as a young woman, I really thought, oh, I'm strong enough to deal with this. I do not need counselling. Um, but I actually came to the realisation that it would be a good thing to try. And it really had to. I have to say that really, really had to. And I'd recommend that to anybody who thinks, oh, that's just not for me. Give it a go. Just give it one, one session and see if that even helps. Sometimes talking to a stranger, like I'm always saying, people say, I can't talk to anybody in my life they're too close to the to the situation and then I'm always like well why don't you just talk to someone that you don't know you know talk to someone that, that doesn't have anything to do with this um or anything to do with your situation because sometimes that helps because you can be a lot freer in what you talk about um but transition wise and I'm quite conscious of this as well I'm always saying it's easy for us or it's easy for people to go oh yeah I went through all this crap and now look at me my life is amazing look at me in my beautiful house and my beautiful clothes and you know I'm having a great life over here but that's very unrelatable to someone who's actually in the midst of it or going through the, this hard time and um, so as, as a journey I suppose what I did was I did jump on a plane to New York um, and I did travel America I got a job in New York at the time then went traveling around America while still dealing with these feelings this was the start of my journey to be like telling telling the mindsets and telling the lies that they were actually lies, becoming really aware of them. Um, so I travelled to America. I then moved back to Ireland for a period of two years, got myself set back up in a job, etc. But it was really when I moved to London, I have to say, for me personally, um, I think when I moved to, to New York initially, I wasn't... I was only starting to become aware of it and only starting to take authority over it. And that, it takes time. It was definitely a period of three years, um... And then when I moved to London, I was in that space where I could go, I could recognise the thoughts as soon as they came up. I could recognise the anxiety when it started. That, that The anxiety I felt had been broken off and the depression had been broken like at the start of the journey, but it takes that three years to really implement those changes in your mind, I suppose, and take authority over them completely. So it was when I came to London then, and got myself kind of set up in a new life over here that I started um, I started doing really healthy things like going to the gym regularly and um, going to church regularly which for me is, is important um, and then just taking a lot of time for myself I did do quite a lot of counseling up until that so that really helped as well it set me on a new platform um, and that was five or six years ago now and I haven't looked back it, it's really just been consistent really I'm, I really want to encourage people today that today you can make a decision to take authority over those that mindset in your life or that lie that you're believing or that depression or anxiety that's hovering over you you can take authority over it today um but I don't want to lie to you and say that that's going to conquer it in one day right. it's consistency it's every day making that decision and I want to encourage you all anybody who's dealing with these mindsets that 
one day it will work. It will just stop and you'll get there. You will get there. It's only a matter of time. And there's so much science behind this now, right? About, you know, new neural pathways and that we, in order to create new habits, these things just take time to, to develop and become like your natural way of thinking. Or maybe the, for some of us, they'll never be our natural way of thinking, but we, get, we can get good at overriding the, the difficult thoughts. Um, so you've obviously picked up some, some skills and, you know, things that you've practiced for yourself. Along the theme of uh, adversity, would you say that there's been other adversities that you've faced within your life? Um, definitely. I feel like my whole uh, life, I suppose, has been quite different to maybe people that are listening. Um, I know yourself, Petra, has a lot of has had a lot of adversity in your own life. Yeah. Um, I think being raised in in Ireland, in the countryside, you know, in a real small town, <laughs> you're raised almost with a with a small town type of culture, um, and that can be sometimes a mindset even. Coming out of that and then, um, I suppose, having dealt with a, such a huge loss at 18, and yeah. um, in, in my brother, and my brother was my best friend, so that was a huge loss at 18, at a very young age, to deal with that grief. Now looking back as, um, you know, as a a grown woman, it's like, wow, I did, I really did have to grow up really fast. Mm. And also I haven't been in a relationship from when I was 15 to when I was 22. So pretty much I like the main years of growing into a woman, um, in my life. Uh, that was, I suppose that had a huge impact on me as well. That ending, um, along the, along the lines or at the same time. Um, so I feel like a lot of my path was, was possibly different. My life path was possibly dis- different to a lot of people's. But I do think that each human being has their own unique story. You know, they might ha- it might be slightly different as yours is Petra, and um, and they might have dealt with grief or loss or or really hard decisions or really hard times in their lives in different ways. I'm always saying that you know each of us has a has a story inside of us or has a book inside of us. It's whether we choose to share it with the world, right? But I do think that sharing it with the world really makes a difference to the world because you don't know who you're helping just by speaking about it. Um, so yeah, I feel like my, my life has been colourful up until this point. Um, the period of living in New York and, and travelling around America was amazing. Um, and obviously then moving to London here and like another beautiful city has been wonderful. And I'm sure that my life holds some other, <laughs> some other surprises in store for me. I mean, do you think, uh, obviously it would be, awful to to think that we would have wanted the ish, the incident to happen with your brother obviously we wouldn't w- have wanted that to happen but do you think as people we almost need adversity in our lives of some description to strengthen us to push us forward to get a sharper mindset do we need some of these challenges you know i think so i really agree i, I agree i mean it would be amazing if we didn't have oh, to wouldn't go it? through this <laughs> but we'd be like yay life is just so simple and happy and you know it'd be all rainbows but I do I do think it's a growth thing I think it really helps with your growth as a person I I meet you know you meet people all the time that um say when you say if you're if you get to know them and you're sharing some of your story with them they're like wow you went through and I'm sure you get this all the time but you, you went through so much like how are you how are you here? How are you, how are you so happy? How do you enjoy your life every day? And, and I'm like, you know what? It was the best. As I'm always saying, even in regards to the the loss of my brother, like it was, it was the most horrific like time of my life. But it was the best learning time of my life. I really learned. It really taught me how strong I am as a person, and and definitely, yeah, like. Even in the simplest life situation now, whereby, um, you know, things happen where you're not expecting them. Like I was just sharing with you, my, my house was burgled two weeks ago. Yeah. And I came in and was like, oh, I've been burgled. Yeah. My, house, my house has been burgled. And my laptop's gone. And in that moment, I had the, the choice to go, oh, this is horrific. It's a really bad thing that's happened to me. Um, and panic. Or... Or I t- what the decision I did make was to be like, okay, I've been burgled. 
oops, you know, what am I going to do? I'll ring the police, I'll, you know, report it stolen. And it's a laptop at the end of the day. Of course, you know, financially, it's, it's an inconvenience, but it's just a laptop. No one's, no one's lost a life, no one's been hurt. Mm-hmm. So it, it really changes your perspective. And to be honest, if I could go back and change my life, I'm sure you're the same, Petra. Sometimes you think, yeah, if I could go back and change the pain that I went through and when I dealt with, I would. But most of the time, I wouldn't because I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't know what I know. And, and, you know, experience really is knowledge. I'm really grateful for the experiences, every experience I've had in my life, including, and it's it's weird to say this, I'm sure people are like, what? But including the experience of losing my brother because it taught me a really crucial lesson in life that I wouldn't know now. And I do meet people in life today who haven't learned the lessons that we have, Petra. And, and, you know, I really want to encourage the people going through these things right now that you will be a better person because of it. The the people who don't suffer like this, unfortunately, sometimes they don't have an awareness of life in general, right? It's true, it's true. Um, So if somebody was in that rock bottom or struggling place now, what would be your advice to them? Like, what is the the first, second, third things that, that you would kind of encourage them to, to do to get on the road, the path to recovery and, and turning their adversity into advantage? Well, the first thing I think I would do is reg- or tell them or recommend that they do is even regardless if it's anxiety or a fear or a lie or a mindset, I would always suggest even, you know to my clients to take five minutes to breathe. Just take five minutes to relax. Yeah. Sometimes, especially when you're in the moment where you're going to have a panic attack, um, it's just all rushed, right? It's all like, and you can't even breathe. You can't think your way out of it. You can't breathe your way out. It's nothing. So I always just say, just stop. Just stop where you are. So as soon as these thoughts or this anxiety attack starts to happen or this general feeling of depression, just try and... Take authority over that moment and stop it. Um, take a moment to breathe. Um, if you have, I suppose, a continuous thought, what I always suggest is if, the con- if there's a continuous thought that's causing you this anxiety or this depression, then I always say go to the end of that thought. Go to the end of that journey. What's the worst that can happen? So if you're saying... I'm going to lose my job in the morning and having a complete panic attack about it. Well, go to the end of that story. Think it through. Write it through. You know, envision it through. Visualize it through. If I lose my job in the morning, what am I going to do? What can I do? Well, you know what I could do? I could go out and get a new job. I could, you know, draft up my CV. I could maybe take a few days off to relax. And financially, how would I manage? Could I maybe get get a, get some help from someone to help me or could I save in preparation that if it did happen so go to the end of the story if shit really hits the fan and and the worst thing worst case scenario happened what is that and how am I going to work that through and I do feel like I'm doing that and by the way the worst case scenario never usually happens no. with statistically I think we spend 70 percent of our time uh almost you know thinking about something that is never going to happen. You know, that's our anxiety or worry, something that never happens. But if it did, what would I do? And I do feel like in doing that, that really kind of helps you put things in perspective and really make you feel really makes you feel prepared if the worst case scenario happens, this is what I do. So the first thing I suggest is to stop, to breathe, to stop all the rushing, you know, these thoughts and uh, this process that's happened, just take authority over it and stop it. Mm. And and how, I know that sounds really easy for me to say, I'm always saying people are like, but how it's like taking over my brain. I just say, just practice recognizing when it's about to start. Practice feeling the feeling in your tummy or the feeling in your mind when it's about to start and then go, hang on a second, this is what's about to happen. Let me try and just stop it and breathe. In that moment, breathe, you know, and count to 10, breathe. And then think about what's, what's what may be causing this anxiety or this stress and then go to the worst case scenario and plot out yeah. your new beginning or your new ending, should I say. Um, and I feel like that process can really, has really helped, has really helped my clients to come back and say, oh, that really works. I feel like that really works and that will really help. And so I know that you are working at the top of your game at the moment, uh, uh, you're successful, you're putting yourself out there, your story is out there, all those sorts of things. 
What like habits and routines do you keep in place now in order to sustain that? So I know it's like it can be different when you're experimenting with things, especially at the beginning. But it's like, what, what's really important to you now to, to keep in place to stay there? Well, I think, uh, like I shared earlier, definitely I go to the gym regularly because exercise is really important. People don't realize how many endorphins get released when you exercise and how beneficial that is to the mind, body and soul. Uh, not just to look up, but to feel good, generally feel good and have a really good, um, I suppose, well-being feeling um, throughout. So exercise, of course, for me, I, I go to the church because I've got a personal faith and that really helps me. And I'm sure, you know, whoever whoever's listening to this may have their own faith. So practicing that as well can give you strength. And uh, I would just say in general, really getting to know who you are as a person and what you need. So personally, I'm most people are shocked when they hear this, but I am an introvert. So what? um <laughs> Yeah, so I'm an introvert and uh, it took me years to actually recognise this and realise that I was an introvert, but I've got excellent extrovert skills. So I have no problem walking into a room full of people, you know, chatting to people. I have no, no problem with speaking on stage in front of hundreds of people. That's fine for me. Even though I'm an introvert, that's fine because I've honed my, my extrovert skills. But what I need to do at the end of the day is be by myself. An extrovert, the reason that you know if you're, you're an extrovert or how you know if you're an extrovert or an introvert is, is where you get your energy from. So if you get your energy from being around people, you're an extrovert. If you get your energy from being um, by yourself and you're an introvert, and me personally, I get my, my energy from being by myself. So I have to ensure that throughout the day there are periods where I am by myself. And if it's a day where I'm hosting an event, I have to make sure that throughout the day, if I don't get the time, that I really get it that whole evening. And and just getting to know who you are and what works for you really helps. Um, so I, alongside that, I'd say, you know, if you get your energy from being around people, well, then maybe be around people. You know, don't. <laughs> is that you, yeah. Petra? I have yeah. to be around people. If I'm by yeah. myself too long, like I just like my brain starts playing tricks on me. Um, I just feel isolated. I feel lonely. I definitely get that doesn't mean like you've honed some skills around being an extrovert. I've definitely yeah. honed some skills around being on, on my own and filling up my mind and uh, that sort of thing. But I definitely fill up around people. But I should say around the right people. <laughs> So I think that plays a part as well. Like I don't want to, we all have, get affected by people who are drains or people who kind of uplift us, but I've had to put some mental energy into nurturing relationships that fill me up, you know? Um, but I definitely, especially now that I work for myself and I'm an entrepreneur and I spend, there's a lot more time that I just spend on my own in front of my laptop. I have to consciously plan uh, sort of extrovert activities in the evening in order to balance myself out. 100%. It's funny. That yeah. Um, so um, so uh, let people know where they can find you if, if they uh, want to work with you, if they're interested in finding more about your story or specifically around this anxiety and fears thing, which you seem to be really good at. Where can people connect with you? Of course. Well, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. My, my hashtag and my app is a ladder size to life. Um, I do have a website in the making, a new website. It's www.aladdersidetolife.com. Um, and also, of course, I'm on Facebook, a ladder side to life. You can um, follow my personal page. It's Anne Marie Smith. Um, so just please feel free to drop me a DM if anything that we've discussed today resonates with you or if you'd like to have a free consultation I'd like to offer that out to your audience today as well happy to have you know coffee with you and discuss what you're going through and what's what fears or anxieties you're dealing with in your life and how we can conquer them together love that so much we'll add all of that into the show notes connected to the podcast Amory thank you so much for your time your your wisdom and of course me and you we're going to connect in the future again so yes. thank you so much Definitely, Patrick. Thank you so much for having me on and thank you so much for everybody who listens. Um, I'm looking forward to speaking to you all in the future.